welcome to my channel. Thanks for stopping by. I'm coming on today to do a tiny TN tutorial. I shared these little um, traveler's notebooks the other day and I wanted to come on and do a quick tutorial on it for you guys so you guys can uh, make some on your own. Anyways, let's get started. Let me put these aside. Uh -oh. Hope everyone's doing well. Saturday today. Hope everyone um, is having a good start to their weekend. But anyways, I wanted to film this earlier in the week, but it was so busy. So I have uh, some time today, so I wanted to go ahead and do that. So first of all, the purpose of these tiny journals, traveler's notebooks, is to use your 6 by 6 paper. So now I went through my stash and I had tons of 6 by 6s So today I decided to use this one here, which is My Mind's Eye, and it's called Follow Your Heart. I got this 6 by 6 pad quite a while ago, and it was just sitting in a box, and I figured, you know what, let me get this one out and use it. So um, today I'll be using this one here. And I also have Christmas paper that I had bought uh, last year from, I believe, Marshalls. Yeah, I got this one from Marshalls. So we're going to be using this one to do a little Christmas themed one. And there's that one. And this one is by uh, American Crafts and it's called Let It Snow. So what I did was I picked out my covers. I already picked out my covers. And also you want to pick out three different sheets that you'll be using for your inserts. So I already picked out these three for one of them. And then I picked out three for the other one. We'll probably just do um, one traveler's notebook today just to give you an idea. But I wanted to show you. So you want to pick out four. One for your cover and three for your inserts. Okay. And then once you figure that out, now these this one here is double sided so I'll do this one today so those are double sided and then you want to cut it to size which the size for the cover is four and a half inches tall by let me make sure by six inches so you don't cut anything from the width just the height four and a half inches okay so I did that to both of these and I wanted to show you you have space here when you go ahead and laminate and I don't like to waste it so I go ahead and I punch out some things these ones I stamped out and uh, colored so I figured you know what let me put these in there maybe I can make some paper clips or just use it for embellishments and I did some of these little uh, punch outs of Halloween paper circles these are the one inch circles that I was mentioning and I wanted to tell you an update on that. Remember I shared this little bottle cap and these, this was a sticker that I used that already had the epoxy on the top. Well you could do epoxy if you, if you don't have the stickers with um, glossy accents. But I decided to try and laminate mine and I mentioned that one that I would give it a try and so that's what I did. I laminated, whoops, I laminated it and then I used E6000 to uh, ad uh, adhere it to the bottle cap sticks just fine and it does give it that little glossiness so it looks like epoxy but it's not as dimensional and then I just added some beads lobster clasp I think it came out really cute so that's a great way to you know to use those bottle caps as well and so I used up all this space so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut this out I wanted to show you um, how I did it using the full sheet so you know you can throw in you know whatever you want to laminate so you don't waste it you could even use like Halloween stickers you know so that you have it laminated okay so let me put this aside and let's cut this off here and I'm gonna use my trimmer paper trimmer to get it around and oh by the way before you laminate, you do want to corner around your paper. And what I used is this Fiskars one. 
I don't know what size this one is here on the corner, but any corner, any corner puncher to do that. Because as an example, on this one here I did, I forgot to do that before I laminated it. So it, it still looks nice, but I prefer it to be rounded. And then let's get my paper trimmer. So, what you want to do, like on my paper trimmer, there's a little mark here. If you can see where the white begins and the silver ends, that's where I feel that I've lined mine up and it leaves just enough border of the laminate, you know, that I like. So I'll go ahead and trim that off. I mean, you could probably... And you don't want to line it up here, okay? Because sometimes if you if you put it in the lam the laminate um, stuff that it won't you you're not putting it in straight. So I wouldn't line it up here. I would use this as your guide, okay? Line that part up straight at the edge of your paper here, so you know that it's going to be straight, okay? When you cut it. So let's get this going here. All right. Oops. And I've had this trimmer forever. I kind of want to get the rotary one, but I'm like, you know what? I already have like two paper trimmers and you know, I mean, obviously the rotary one is pretty pricey. I mean, there's ones that are like this size and it's rotary and it's about 20 bucks. But I figured, you know what, I'd rather get the large one if I'm going to get another paper trimmer. So anyways, I went ahead and trimmed that. And as you can see, there is a little tiny bit of a border. I would say, you know, maybe a quarter inch. Now you've got these corners here. Um, the um, corner punch is not, it, it, you know, I don't want to damage it, so I'm just going to go ahead and just trim it. Just take it around and trim it. Just like this. Because the lemon is kind of, you know, kind of thick, and you don't want to damage your, your paper punch on that. And it's easy enough to just go ahead and trim that. So now all I have all my stuff trimmed and it's looking good. So now we're going to go ahead and score it. And let me grab my scoring tool. I do have the large Martha Stewart one that can, you know, do the uh, 12 by 12. But I also found this little one, which I find this is really handy too. So it comes with the scoring tool. And it's a little, it's like six and, six and a half inches long. So... Now we're going to score. So we want to leave a gap of, a, of half an inch. So on this side here, if you notice, if you put that on here, it's, the measurement's going to be off. So what I did was I kind of brought my paper to the edge. The laminate, it went over it. So I'm lining up the edge of the paper, okay? You can see that. I lined up the edge of the paper to the, corn, the edge here. And let's go ahead um the top part really is not as important as being lined up here but you do want to be lined up actually sorry so let's line this up so if this is six inches three inches would be the center so i go in a quarter so that would be two and three quarter okay let me screw this down a little bit two and three quarter and you want to go slow because you know since it's slippery you don't want to like jump the line and then make your line crooked so now I went a quarter in this way I'm gonna go a quarter out so that'll be three and a quarter inch and take that down and you want to do it a couple times and by the way this is also Martha Stewart um, dry embossing it's like embossing tool set it came like with three and they all have different sizes on it so anyways you can see the score line here so that's a half an inch of a 
space here and then you want to go ahead and fold it but do it nice and slow you don't want you know anything to rip or wrinkle up so you do it little by little and I go ahead and just take it down I'm gonna do the other side like this I mean you could score your paper prior to laminate laminating it which I have tried and what I noticed is since there's a score mark the laminate sometimes will come up because there was already like that um, I don't know if you want to call it a gap but it will you know not adhere nicely I mean sometimes you can get it like that but I prefer just scoring it after it's laminated so here we go we got our cute little cover already inside is double sided and there's the back so now we're gonna go ahead and get our three papers that we chose to um, do our inserts with So let's put this aside and here are my three papers so the three inserts measure four and a half so it's going to be the same height as your cover and the width will be four and seven eighths okay so that will keep the um, if you look here it'll keep it from peeking out so if you open it like this it has a little bit of space here okay so that's what we want to do so I've picked my three papers and we're going to go ahead and trim those down so if you notice uh, you know pay attention to you know your design of the paper and see you know if that's going to work um, when you fold it okay that it's going to be facing the right side because sometimes you'll have stuff on this side and you're the one that you want is on the right you want it to be on the right side so when you fold it so I'm gonna go ahead and trim my paper down to the height of four and a half okay let me trim those all and I think I'm gonna use this side here so let's trim that save these little scraps because I'm probably going to make some uh, little bows with it and then you know what, I'm going to get my other trimmer because I, it's hard to see the four and seven eighths on that one so let me get my small one so I'm going to go ahead and trim this side because I want to keep this all there okay so I'm going to flip it this way four and seven eighths Is that the measurement that looks a little small? Let me see. Yeah, it says four and seven eighths. And that would be four and seven eighths. So let's go ahead and trim it. Let me just make sure here. Why does that look so small? Just double check real quick here. Sorry, guys. I just want to double check it. It looks a little small. Why is that? Anyways, I am so sorry. Every time I start a tutorial, I get, you know. It's supposed to actually be the paper that goes in size is four and seven eighths, and the cover should be five and an eighth. So I messed up. My apologies. I'm confusing myself. But you see, it looked a little small to me, so I had to stop myself. So I'm glad I did before I cut all my papers. 
So we're going to have to put this one aside. And I'm going to bring back my other trimmer because this one only goes up to five inches. So we're going to go to my other one. Open this up. And then we're going to cut these to five and one eighth. So insert covers are four and a half inches tall, five and one eighth inches wide. Okay. My mistake. I want to keep this on this side. So I'm going to go ahead and trim this side. I'm going to five and one eighth. And let's quickly pick up another piece of paper for the other insert. Let's just use this one here. So let's cut this at four and a half. Bye. Five and one eighth. All right. Now we got our insert covers. I don't know. I think I'm going to use this side. So yeah. So let's use this side. So I'm going to fold this down and get your bone folder. Crease that. And then I wanted to do this side. So anyways, um, it is really simple. If you have your notes, you should definitely use them because see, that's what happens. I made a mistake and I could have just read my notes, right? Now I have my three inserts. Now we're going to go ahead and cut the paper that we will be putting inside. Okay. So I'm going to just use regular copy paper and I'm trying to conserve and use as much as I can. So for one insert, you just use two pieces of paper. And I'm going to show you how to cut it so you can get the most out of your paper. Okay. So this will give you, uh, I believe, 16 sheets in each insert. So I take my two and I use the whole paper to cut right down the middle at four and a quarter. Okay, so we're going to go four and a quarter. Make sure everything lines up. Go ahead and cut it. Then, as I said, the, uh, the cut for the width will be four and seven eighths. So let me bring back my other one. And the reason why that's smaller is so you don't have any overhang on your little inserts. You see how it's a little shorter than the actual cover, so it doesn't stick out. That's why it is four and seven eighths. So it's a little smaller than the cover. So now I'm gonna go ahead and cut the width to four and seven eighths, just right there. Okay. Sorry guys, I don't do very many tutorials and I'm not that prepared and I got to practice a little more. I'll eventually get there, guys. So let's do the last one. And I'll just make one insert for now so you can get the idea. Okay, so there's that. I've um, cut all those down, and this is all that I have left. Now you can put this aside and you can save that. You can use that, you know, make a little tiny little notebook with. Okay. So anyways, here it is. So I got two there, so I'm gonna fold two at a time. So you just fold them right in half. Okay, line those up. And 
and it's really nice because you're only using two pieces of paper okay so I mean you don't have to use copy paper you could use you know scrapbook paper if you like you know but since I have this on hand I just use that you know it'd be cute too to use like graph paper you know or you can you can actually print out like um, line paper on your computer or dotted paper you know you could do all kinds of stuff so you know use your imagination it'll be coming it'll come out really cute no matter what you do okay so I put all those in there I mean I folded all of them so now I'm gonna put them all together okay I'm gonna grab one of these here And what I do here is I just see how there's a little border um, so it doesn't meet exactly. So you just center that. I just eyeball it. You know, I'm not going to sit there and measure it. And I use my stapler from Daiso. Now, I don't know if you've seen my previous video regarding this, but this is the coolest thing ever. Look, it swings out, you know, because like on a normal, you know, if you try and do this, well, this one actually reaches. But I like to do it this way because that's what's intended so that you could get into this the center part of your notebook and staple it because you could do it regularly or you know the opposite way okay to make it easy for you to staple so I'm gonna just go ahead and staple it now you can usually you staple you know people will staple it from the outside in and have the you know the back part of the staple inside but I kind of like to do it the smooth way on the inside so it doesn't get my um, my what you call it my elastic you know caught on it or anything so I leave that on the outside because that's the part that's going to be you know against the spine of the notebook so I think it's fine and for me I think that works out better so go ahead and fold it you got your insert you got your papers okay and if you don't have this stapler and your stapler won't reach it usually will reach let me just grab my regular stapler like for instance here's my regular one for this size notebook you could reach it no problem okay but I like it because it has little smaller staples in there so I like using it but your regular stapler should work just fine so you don't have to run out and go get one of these or anything special okay because it is a small notebook and that's what I love about it. So anyways, here we go. Here's the notebook. I mean, here's your cover and here's the insert. And then I got all these elastics, these hair elastics that I got from um, Dollar Tree. You get like 100 in a pack. And you know, one pack had like these vibrant colors. The other one had like the black, browns, and navies. So I got that. Um, so whoops, let me use the uh, brown one. I mean, if you don't have this either and you have uh, elastic cording, go ahead and use that too. So go ahead and just wrap it around like that, just like this, okay? And that's what I mean, you know, so if you had the, the back side of the stapler, it might get caught on this uh, elastic when you're pulling it in and out. So I figured that's why I put the back side of the staple on this side, okay? So that is the tiny traveler's notebook now you use another elastic you can put ribbon on it you could do whatever you want but I feel that anybody can do this you know it's not very hard to have all the materials for and you know you probably already have some six by six that's just sitting there and this is a way to use that now not to say you can take a 12 by 12 and do a six by six like that but the one thing I like about the six by six um, paper pads is that all the prints are much smaller so it's like perfect because this on a 12 by 12 it would probably take up the whole thing or go into the back but on a 6 by 6 all the prints are smaller and it may be the exact same print on a 12 by 12 but everything has just shrunken down so that's why I love this project you use your 6 by 6 papers look we've already used four pieces of paper and then you know using all your your inserts and your uh, copy paper 
you'll only be using six pieces of copy paper. And you can get that white copy paper from anywhere, and I know you probably have it at home. Um, you can go and get colored copy paper, which I have, that I've had for a while, because I love paper, so I have all kinds of different colors of the copy paper. So anyway, that is the tutorial. Now the measurements, I will go ahead and put them in the description box so that you can refer back to it if you need to. Okay, and I really appreciate you guys coming by and watching this video. I appreciate your likes, your subscriptions. I really appreciate that support. And I'm glad that you guys um, come and watch my videos. So anyways, if you have any questions in regards to, you know, anything, this little notebook or anything you'd like to know, please leave it in the comment box. I will try and get back to you on that as soon as I can but thank you again for stopping by I hope this tutorial has inspired you to create your own tiny journals your tiny travelers notebooks and like I said perfect for gifts stocking stuffers for whatever you need okay thank you for watching and you guys have a great weekend bye